A native of Tampa, Florida, Bishop Gilliard has spent over 35 years preaching. 22 of those years have been spent traveling the world as a full-time evangelist, prolific preacher, and a revelatory teacher. Like Nehemiah, he is not afraid of the assignment which God has placed in his hands to accomplish. His burning vision is to see the lives of all mankind transformed by the revelation of God's word. His mantle is prophetic in purpose, apostolic in function, pastoral in compassion, and evangelistic in outreach. In November 2002, God compelled Bishop Gilliard to step into a new dimension of service in the office of pastor, at which time Bethlehem Judah Christian Fellowship Co. Jik was established upon the foundation of its core values, love, excellence, generosity, hospitality, and service. Let's welcome Bishop Anthony Gilliard. The book of Joshua, chapter number five, if you would draw your attention there, the book of Joshua, chapter number five. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua, chapter number five, verse number six. And if you allow me to read from the NIV version, I apologize. I hate to have you going back up and down, but if it is your tradition, if you would just stand with me for the reading of the Holy Writ. And after this, I won't ask you to stand no more until we pray. Um, the Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died since they had not obeyed the Lord for the Lord sworn to them that they would not see the land that he had solemnly promised their ancestors to give us a land flowing with milk and honey so he raised up their sons in their place or in their stead and one of the sons were Joshua. So Joshua was circumcised. They were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in the camp until they were healed. And then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach off of Egypt from you, so this place will be called Gilgal till this day. And on the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. Verse 7 is where we shall gain principal thought for the next 20 minutes or so, if you would allow me, and ask God for preaching power. So he raised up their sons in their place. Before you sit down, just tell your neighbor, the replacements are coming. The replacements are coming. Please be seated in the house of the Lord. When we understand that Egypt was not just a place of slavery, but Egypt was also a place of stigma. Egypt represented a place of shame. Egypt represented a place of misfortune and a place of misplacement. Hear me, my brothers and sisters, the children of Israel were never, ever intended by the plan of God to be residents in Egypt. Not just residents in Egypt, it was really never God's plan for them to even be slaves in Egypt. The real deal of Egypt was the place of their preservation. Please understand, upon their arrival to Egypt, about 70 strong, they only went there so that prophecy could be fulfilled. Prophecy that I will have a nation unto myself. And because famine has hit the whole known earth and the only place that had bread was Egypt. 
God strategically places Joseph in Egypt and causes him to rise to second in command only so prophecy can be preserved. You must understand the strategic moves of God and how he moves things around just to keep his word. You must see how devoted he is to his promises concerning you that if he's got to root you up and drop you in a strange land just so he can do what he said he's going to do, he's going to do it. When you become more comfortable with his word, you'll become no more worried about where you are. I think people that are confused about where they are in life are people that have forgotten their word because if you remember your word, no matter where God places you, a spirit of peace comes upon you because you know your steps are ordered by the Lord and we love to quote that but not only are my steps ordered by the Lord but wherever I land he delights in it no 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 people don't want to teach this but there's a side of God that takes pleasure in your pain there's a side of God uh, that rejoices even in the worst seasons of your life because it is in that moment you reveal the truth of how you feel about him that if you're able to give him praise even on a bad day it really shows him that you trust him I know I wasn't going to get help on that part the real trust of God is not when everything is met the real trust of God is not when everything is in order the real trust of God is when my life is falling apart but my behavior toward my God does not change mm, I got to move I got to move so it is this concept now that I am stuck in this place and I only became a slave please hear me I only became a slave because people became intimidated by my growth <laughs> Mm -mm. It was the idea of a Pharaoh that got in power that didn't know the God of Joseph. And because he did not know the God of Joseph, he became intimidated by the growth of Israel. Y'all still ain't seeing it. Really, I have no problem with you. I just have problem with your progress. Really, I have no issue and no beef with who you are. I just have an issue and a beef that you're growing. Do you realize there's some just can't handle your growth there's some people mm, that just can't celebrate the fact that there's something on you called favor and you'll prosper in a desert you'll prosper anywhere God put you and when people don't know what to do with your favor then they enslave you they, they begin to talk to you and try to talk you out of your favor they will cause you not even to reflect upon who you are okay Okay, I must just be preaching to myself but I wish I had somebody that would say there's been folk that talked me out of places that I knew God had for me but I trusted their voice <laughs> and there comes a season then that this Pharaoh now afflicts them and switches them from being guests to being slaves I wish I had time to deal with that from being guests to being slaves and the more they grew the more they were afflicted and the more they were afflicted the more they grew y'all still ain't seeing it yet and the more they grew and the more they were afflicted and the more they were afflicted and the more they grew so the bottom line is that I appreciate affliction because affliction makes me grow I appreciate your lie because if you hadn't lied I wouldn't have prayed I appreciate your betrayal because if you have been betrayed betray me I wouldn't have fast I wouldn't have tapped into the power that I now have if you hadn't done what you did I know this is a little contrary but some of you need to send your enemy a thank you card because the bottom line is I appreciate what you did because it expanded me a little bit more I got to go home. I got to go home. Now because of the shift in their position that they go from guest to slavery, it begins to 
heal pastor and deacon the mentality of the prophecy I need you to catch this because prophet can, prophecy can still be hanging over you but reality can begin to crush the mentality of the prophecy anybody ever been there where it took so long that you started doubting that it took so much that you started backing away and so God said because of the mentality of the children of Israel they no longer have the ability to think of themselves as land owners they no longer y'all ain't gonna help me have the ability to see themselves as people chosen no other nation in the earth is going to be able to claim I'm chosen by God everybody else will be called heathens y'all don't hear me but it is only this one nation that God said I will call unto myself and so now the Bible says that Moses has died and because Moses has died a replacement has to come this replacement then is by the name of Joshua Joshua has served at all levels Joshua has been a slave he's been a servant he's been a son he's not just somebody that pops on the scene and say I want to run the show he has been there he has been faithful he has proven the place and now God raises up the leader but in raising up the leader the people come out of the place but the place don't come out of them I wish I had time to deal with it that you can be somewhere and around some people for so long that even after you leave them their stigma is still on you <laughs> okay you're gonna sit there and be cute tonight but I need about three folk that's willing to admit you got rid of some people but you still didn't know how to get them out of you and that's why you kept checking their Facebook status and wondering who they was going to eat out with now y'all don't hear me here you stalker y'all don't hear me here God was trying to get you out of something but you didn't know how to get all the way out. I just come by to tell the organization that new days are ahead. Better days are ahead. And God said whatever mark was on you that kept you from getting where you got to go. I'm not just going to bring you out but I'm going to take the stigma off. I dare you prophesy to somebody and wave at them and say I promise you after tonight the mark won't even be on you no more. I need you to grab a neighbor and say I promise you after tonight the memory of some stuff is getting ready to shift can I prophesy a spiritual amnesia up in here for somebody you ain't even gonna remember the pain It's this idea now that we come to this place, this mark of disgrace or reproach, this thing called Egypt that even though I'm out of it, it is not out of me. And so then God now has to bring me to this place and I'll deal with it called a Gilgal. Moses has been given the order to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Let me go back there for 30 seconds. But what happens is, presiding bishop elect is that when he goes he does not get a yes on his first request please stay with me he goes and says to Moses God said let us go no wait God said let us go no here's the interesting part about this when you go home and read it the same time Moses was going God was going too Wait, stay with me. God was not going to tell Pharaoh, yes, God was going to tell Pharaoh, don't do it. Mm. Wait, wait. So you mean to tell me I'm obeying you and before I get to the assignment, you're making the assignment difficult. Read the text. I'm going to tell you, go tell Pharaoh to get you go. But then before you get to Pharaoh, I'm going to go there and tell Pharaoh, don't let him go. And here becomes one of the most complex and confusing things in life is that your obedience is made 
difficult not by you but by God how strange is it that I'm doing what he told me to do and he's made it hard and I come to tell you the reason he's made it hard is to multiply his miracles because y'all still ain't seeing it yet if Moses had got a yes on the first request frogs wouldn't have needed to show up water wouldn't have needed to turn to blood y'all still ain't seeing this yet gnats wouldn't have needed to take over so I just come to tell somebody every no you heard is just so God could show out and there comes a season y'all still ain't with me yet that God said if you get yes too quick you gonna shut down my program my program is to blow the minds of them that are watching you because they feel like you ain't gonna do nothing with what you got but if God be for you So there's no then multiply. Wait, wait, wait. That just ain't the end of it. The no actually sets it up for Jesus to come. Y'all still ain't hearing me. Because if, y'all still ain't got me yet. If there had been a yes before the tenth yes. Wait, wait, wait. If there had been a yes before the tenth request, excuse me, Passover wouldn't have been established. And if Passover wouldn't have been established, Jesus couldn't have come. Because Passover was the type of the lamb without blemish who we know Jesus is going to be saved. So guess what, Pharaoh? You had to keep saying no till Jesus showed up. And that's the only thing I'm trying to preach in here tonight. You're going to keep hearing and no till Jesus come <laughs> you but every no is an introduction to him I must be in the wrong church because I thought I was with some good apostolic folk that when you hear the name Jesus you know something getting ready to shift I'm going to try one more time I said that you're going to get a no until Jesus show up and I come to speak to this organization and say every no you heard is just laying the red carpet for Jesus in a little while he's about to blow our mind and show us that no weapon that's been formed against us shall prosper so I'm done I'm out we're all out 70 people has turned into over 3 million Moses has led them out but pastors bishops overseers the people have pushed Moses to a place where he leads them out but will not be able to lead them in. Please stay with me. Bishop, do I have about eight minutes and I'm going to wrap this up. He, he, he does not lead them in because the frustration of leadership the frustration of serving people, the frustration of getting people where they have to go. If you don't temper it yourself, you will preach people to heaven and end up in hell. That's why Paul said, I have to take charge of myself. Least why I've got other folk where they needed to be. I myself become a castaway because the frustrating thing about leading folk is that they will push you to a place that you almost lose yourself. I ain't gonna get no help in here because see y'all preachers want to sit here and be deep. Let me talk about my folk then. My folk will almost push me to a place that I want to lose myself. What, what did Moses do that was so bad? Moses struck the rock with the stick but what's the issue with striking the rock with the stick number one I didn't tell you to do it I told you to talk because if you're my servant that your strength is in your words and not in your arm and see that's what folk want to try to do they want to push you to lean on your strength and not your words and you got to control your 
temper. I ain't getting no help in here. And say, as bad as I want to strike, I'm going to talk. <laughs> because God don't honor my strike. He honors my words. <laughs> I need about five folk that'll be real right quick. <laughs> and say, there's something I feel like hitting, but I'm going to talk. <laughs> okay, y'all too deep. It's something I really feel like taking some anger out on. <laughs> but I know if I hit it, I'm going to miss my promise. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk my way through this one. <laughs> he that has begun a good work in me shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to talk away my mouth this one. Grass will wither and flowers will fade, but the word of my God will stand forever. Y'all still ain't talking with me. I'm just going to talk. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the law deliver them. Wave at your neighbor and say, talk your way out of it. Talk. That neighbor don't want to help me preach. Find one that'll help me preach and say, talk your way. No, no, no. The issue, my sister, is not that I just hit with a stick, but I hit with my symbol of God being with me. Y'all still ain't seeing it. This is the same stick my father-in-law gave me when he began to teach me how to be a shepherd. This is the same stick that I threw on the ground. Y'all still ain't seeing it. And it turned into a snake. I wish y'all could see it. It is the same stick that I stuck out over the Red Sea. And it divided. Y'all still ain't seeing it yet. So when I hit with the stick in anger, I'm taking my miracle. And I'm turning my miracle instead of a tool of deliverance it becomes a weapon of anger can I talk to seven folk in here and tell you don't you never let your miracle uh, become a weapon of anger whatever God has in your hand to show you that he's with you don't respect your miracle in your anger and do something that's gonna cause God to be angry with you but I thank God one monkey don't stop no show Unless it's a one monkey show If it's a one monkey show It's over Y'all don't hear me here But if it's more than one monkey's in the show I still ain't got no help God said replacements Are getting ready to come And that's my divine assignment To preach tonight To find at least 50 folk in the building And 20 watching That's willing to say the only reason I survived Was to be the replacement Ain't no arrogance in me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I ain't even got it together that good. I ain't even smart enough. All I know is that when he stopped one thing, he starts something else. And I just happen to be the something else. I wish you wave at a neighbor and say neighbor. They've been telling me I'm something else all my life. And they finally got it right. I'm something else. Here it is, here it is, here it is. I close, I close, I close, I close. Joshua, this book of conquests, this book of victories, defeats. And so we pick up here that they have not just, stay with me, I know my time is up. They have not just, they, they, they've not just, hear this, they've not just lost Moses. They've not just lost a leader. They've lost soldiers. Read the text. The text says they had to stay where they were until all the men of military age had died. Because where I'm taking you, mm -hmm, they can't go. So I'll stop progress so they can die so they don't hinder progress when you get where you're going. I wish I could talk to some pastors. Sometimes we get letters of resignation that breaks our heart. And what we don't realize is that they had to go. Because if we took them with us, they would stop progress. So let me let them go now. So when I get where I'm going, I don't have no dead weight on me. I just came to prophesy to somebody, get over losing the dead weight. 
you was dragging them anyway. You was paying their bills anyway. Every week you was sending them a cash app. Y'all don't hear me here. They wasn't doing nothing but hanging on to your ankle and not wanting to go nowhere. God said I let them die because when you're getting ready to go somewhere, you need freedom. I wish you'll wave your hand down your row and say where you gonna be by this time next year. You need freedom. You need freedom to think. You need freedom to imagine. You need freedom to operate. You need freedom to move in the gifts of the spirit. You need freedom to function in the apostolic. You need freedom to lay hands and cast out demons. You need freedom to flip this world upside down. I wish I could preach to somebody here and say by the time I get home, the spirit of freedom going to hit my life. And if they thought I was doing something, whoa, wait till convocation is over. Eyes have not seen and Here it is. They die. So he raises up replacements. These are the sons that come in their stead. Wave at your neighbor one more time and say replacements are coming. But those that are re replacements now become encamped at this place called Gilgal. What's the first thing they've got to do? The Bible says he speaks to the replacement leader, Bishop Young, and says, sharpen knives. Because everybody that I've replaced has not been circumcised. Because I have a problem, Brother Deacon, and my problem is, is in the wilderness, I never told you to stop the practices. You let, overseer, a experience stop you from what you knew was right to do. In the wilderness, you should have still been having Passover. Y'all ain't catching it. In the wilderness, all wilderness baby boys should have been circumcised. But you let a wilderness stop you from a command. And how often have we let our experiences stop us from our worship? How often have we let where we are stop us from praying? But I thank God he has a plan called reset. Mm. That even, y'all, you got to hurry. I really try it. Even, y'all are hearing me. When I stopped it, he has another way to start it back up. There's a kickstart getting ready to happen around here in this organization. There's a kickstart that's getting ready to happen in every local church. And the values and the principles that the culture of the day is trying to dry up. God said revival is getting ready to hit your life. Can I talk to seven folk? You just not going to have corporate revival. But you about to have a personal revival. Something about to hit you while you're in your bathroom. You better go back up in your kitchen and be speaking in tongues like you did when you got baptized. I ain't got nobody to help me here. Something getting ready to hit your belly. That everything that's been a distraction is getting ready to be dismissed. I wish I had somebody that'll go with me in this and say revival is about to hit my life. No, don't be shamed. Look at a neighbor and say I've lost some stuff. I've lost some people. I've lost some zeal I've lost some anticipation but I thank God for redo anointing right now I dare you put it down your row and just shout redo redo there's a redo oil getting ready to hit us that we're going to be able to look at the devil and say what you meant for evil God's getting ready to turn it around for 
sharpen you some knives and cut. Circumcise these men. Come on, brothers. I just need us to think about it so we can make the text become alive. Everybody that he's getting ready to cut is somewhere between 40 and 16. Y'all don't hear me here. But he said, cut them anyhow. But sharp the knife. Because in this season of recovery, it's two things I can't have. I can't have a dull knife and I can't have a shaky hand. Y'all don't hear me here. Because a dull knife and a shaky hand gonna do damage. Y'all still ain't helping my preacher. And that's why God has to raise up the right leader. It's too many leaders with knives in their hand and their hands are shaky. Too many leaders. Y'all ain't helping my preacher. That move out of their immaturity and out of their emotions. I don't mind you rebuking me. Just don't kill me. Y'all don't help me here. I don't mind you challenging me for a seed. Just don't fleece me. I wish I had somebody here. I need somebody that's going to believe in me. Correct me, but still know I got potential in me. Don't use me. Don't abuse me. Love on me like a sheep. And if you do, you'll get anything out of me. I wish I had somebody to realize that's why I'm where I am right now. Because a shaky hand was trying to cut me. And I had to get out of there before I bled to death. Y'all ain't going to help my preach. I'm trying to find somebody that'll say, I thank God he got me out. Because if I stayed there any longer, I would have bled to death. They was cutting with dull word. Cutting with shaky Sharpen the knife. Sharpen the knife. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in this season of your life, God's about to cut some stuff. God's about to cut some people. But you got to be still. Y'all still ain't helping my preach yet. Because the leader can have a sharp knife. And he or she can have a still hand. But if you shake it, you're going to still cause damage. Be still and know that I am God it's a season I may have to cut you it's a season I may have to hurt you it's a season I may have to rebuke you but the only reason I'm cutting you is because you are a replacement if you wasn't a replacement I wouldn't even be bothered with you if you wasn't a replacement I would have let your own flesh take you out if you wasn't a replacement you would have died in the car accident if you wasn't a replacement COVID would have took you out but because I got a plan for your life I caused you to live when others thought you would die I caused you to be anointed when other folks said you didn't have no potential and it is I God that's going to prove to the world that my hand is on your life I need somebody that know your replacement change the subject matter wave at them and say I'm on the way because I'm the replacement they just ain't coming I'm coming I've lived through hell and been matured I've been stripped and now I'm ready so then the Bible says that when he caused them to be cut they end up going to a place to be healed the name of that place was Gilgal and Gilgal in the Hebrew means full circle Gilgal deals with the fact that whatever they try to stick on you it just rolls off and that's all I've come to do tonight is to encourage about seven folk that there's about to be a return to values there's about to be a return to holiness there's about to be a return to the culture of miracles and there is nothing that the world can put on us that's going to stick on us it's just going to roll off I heard Paul talk when he had to defend his apostleship he said after I realized that I've been called by God I conferred not with flesh and blood I asked 
nobody their opinion about my call. And when you read the Pauline epistles, you will find him always opening up. I, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. I wish you'd look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, they didn't want me to be the replacement, but I am who I am by the will of God. You can put a let all you want behind my name, but y'all say a let. But he say chosen because elect makes it sound like you had something to do with it. You didn't elect me. You didn't pick me. But he picked me before my mama ever met my daddy. Because he told Jeremiah before your mama met your daddy. I formed you in the belly and sanctified you and set you apart to be who you are and when you realize who you are and when you realize whose you are you don't let words block you you don't let circumstances stop you you don't get in a posture of fight back but you learn how to let the Lord fight your battle I was praying the other day and I kept saying Lord give me my victory and the Holy Ghost came in my room and corrected me and said that's your problem it ain't your victory it's my victory and if you read the book right victory belongs to him he just shares it with us come on Drew let's go home wave at your neighbor and say neighbor it really ain't my victory it belongs to the Lord he just shares it with me he just gives me victory in front of my enemy he gives me victory in front of the naysayers so the book said that after the knives have been sharpened and they're sitting to be healed and that's all I'm here to find somebody that's willing to put it out in the air don't let my non movement think that I'm not ready he's got me steel so he can heal me he's got me steel so when he uses me the next time I don't do no damage I don't spill my issue on other folk y'all ain't gonna like what I'm about to say cause there's a lot of gifted people but they're sick and they're not well and when they use their gift they spill their sickness on the body of Christ but I'm here to tell you tonight that we're finally getting to a place that there'll be no disease transfer in the body of Christ because before he use us he's gonna heal us please be patient with me God is not through with me yet but when he gets through with me I shall come forth as pure gold pat yourself and say don't count me out yet because surely the God that called me is going to perfect the things that concerns my life is there somebody that'll help my last five minutes to realize I'm a replacement I should be dead and the sin that I did should be accounted against me but I'm a replacement he covered my past with the blood he protected my future with prophecy and he holds me in my now with mercy and so I'm covered any way you look at it if you try to bring my past up I'm covered if you say I ain't worthy of my now I'm covered if you say I ain't worthy of my tomorrow I'm covered and the reason I'm covered is because I'm a replacement I 
came to you bishop and to this organization have not met you before and literally was going to preach something else but as I sat in the chair the Holy Ghost said no I want you to let him know and every man and woman of war that they are the replacement and they're on their way nothing was wrong with what was but when what was is over God's glory still have to prevail I ain't got nobody here when you are married to the past and won't let the past go you'll turn a movement into a monument when you won't let God do what he want to do you'll get confused like Peter on the mountain of transfiguration and when Jesus shared his appearance y'all don't hear me with two others Peter got confused and said let's build three tabernacles and stay here but Moses left representing the law and the prophet left representing the prophet and Jesus only was standing there saying I didn't come here for you to get stuck but I came because I'm a replacement Jesus what you gonna replace I'll tell you what I'm gonna replace I'm gonna replace the first Adam because by disobedience sin came in the world but by obedience life came in the world what else you gonna replace Jesus I'm gonna replace the law because where the law was weak it had no power and I did not come to condemn it but I came to fulfill it is there anybody here that can say I'm not a replacement to make the bad to make the past look bad but I'm here to fulfill what they started can I preach to the bishop elect and say the only reason that favor is on your life is because you're the replacement to continue a work in Zion and not only you but the oil on your life starts flowing out to replacements all over the room I wish I had somebody that just say they spoke my death but all they were doing was really speaking my life I wish I had somebody that's willing to wave your hand and say I get it now I had to go through the wilderness so I could be perfected in my assignment but I'm on my way out and when I get out I got work in my hand is there somebody that can say I got work to do I know I'm in an apostolic church I know I'm Kojic but I can borrow the hymn of a good old Baptist church in charge to keep our hand a God to glorify another dying soul to save and fit it for the sky I wish I had somebody that to say I got a charge to keep that's why I got to get out of my feelings and when you stab me in my back I got to take my knife out myself patch myself up and say I'm a replacement keep it going and when you lie on me I got to realize that your words don't matter because the God that created the world with his words 
working over my life. I got a plan for your life. I'm getting ready to quit this, but I'm coming here to come in to connect with somebody that will say I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side and I'm running for my life. I got an assignment. I got work to do. I can't die in my wilderness and I can't let your words break me because the anointing that's on my life is going to shift the world. Come on and tell somebody you come too far. I wish I had some help over here. Tell somebody you come too far to let their words back you down now. Arise, oh Diana, and put on your strength for the hour of your favor is on you right now. I'm talking to somebody in the virtual church. Get up off your sofa and dry your eyes and let the world know if God be for me, who can be against me? And these the Lord raised up in the place. All I'm here to tell somebody get ready he's about to raise you up get ready he's about to lift you out the valley get ready he's about to bring you out the flood get ready your grave days are over I wish I was at my church they surely help me preach right about now I'm sorry bishop I didn't mean to but I wish I had somebody that have found a neighbor that realize your worst days are behind you and your best days are in front of you. It ain't that you've been good. It ain't that you know everything. You ain't the best preacher. You ain't the best singer. You ain't the best business administrator. But what you are is chosen. I wish. I wish I had somebody. Y'all ain't helping my preach. I wish I had somebody that I say I might not be the best. But I'm chosen now. Your church might be bigger than mine, but I'm chosen now. You might have more members than I do, but I'm chosen now. And one thing you can't fight is the hand of God. When God's hand is on your church, when God's hand is on your organization, when God it's on your business. Can't nobody curse what God has blessed. I need tonight the replacement to make some noise. I need tonight. Y'all ain't helping me. Where my timekeeper? We got to get out of here. Where my Need a replacement to sound like it. You sound like you're in a battle. You sound like you're weary. You sound like you're broken. But I need you to sound like a replacement. The replacements are coming. You won't be dead. But yet I got. Beautiful, beautiful life. I am a 
beautiful city of God. They're trying to stop me, but I got much in my feet. I ain't got no help in here. I wish you'd look at your feet and say, get it together. You got marching orders. Why you still in the valley? Why you still down? Get it together. Y'all ain't talking to your feet. Get it together. You got marching orders. Get up from there. Possess the land. And wear it. The sole of your feet. Shall drop. I'm giving you the land that flows with milk and honey. Pick your feet up. And put them down and say it belongs to me. I'm a replacement. I want what's mine. I want my joy. I want my peace. I want my anointing. Let me call it what we did last night in Florida. Anybody grew up in good old sanctified church? Who grew up in the good old sanctified church? And to be a mother in the sanctified church, she had the same tongue all the time. She said the same thing. And the lady was saying it last night. I didn't get it till I grew up. She had to say the same thing. I see, I see, I see. I'm an outside. I see, I see, I see. Y'all ain't ready. I need all the replacements to say I've been blind and I've been weary and well doing. I let your rumor break my spirit. I let you leave in the church question my call. I let you leave in the organization mess with my mind. But I get it tonight. I see, I see, I see. I see where I'm going. I see my future. Y'all don't want to have no trust. I dare you find somebody and say, I see, I see, I see. I feel like having church, I ain't got nobody to go with me though. No more blindness. I can see clearly that the rain is gone. Ah, ain't no need to worry. What the night is gonna bring, it'll be all over in the morning. I came to tell this body of faith, it's morning time. You weep over the leader being called, but God said, Rise up now, build again, grow again, live again. For you are the replacement. When I count to three, I need replacement to lose your mind in the place. And God said, How you praise me for the next 60 seconds? It's how I'm anoint your life. Your church is about to grow. Your business is about to take off. Your dreams about to come to pass. The book is about to finish. The playwright is about to happen. Y'all ain't helping me. The degree is about to come. The loans are about to be paid off. I see, I see, I see. Woo! Something about to shift in my whole life. Cause I'm the replacement. And I'm not gonna wait till the battle is over. I'm a shout right now. I'm a dance right now. I'm a give. One, two, three, let me hear the replacement spring.
the God will put your hand on the name and say, Name, I speak over your life an oil to possess. Tell them on oil to possess. Go get it. Get your dream. Get your life. Get your purpose. Get your land. Get your building. Get your money. Get your honey. Cause I'm sending you to a land that flows with milk and honey. The Lord said what's happening in this room right now is a settling of any doubt. Because I can't do what I said I was going to do if there is any doubt in you. So I settle your doubt factor. And I show you right now that you are the replacement. People ask me, in truth, how long have I been pastoring? And most times I say 21 years because, well, 21 years in November. But one day in the spirit world, I was meditating and praying, speaking, and the Lord said, no, you've not been pastoring for 20 years. In the earth realm, you've been pastoring since 1934. Hear this. Because in 1934 is when I pushed your grandfather to go out. And when he went out, you were in him. You just had to wait your turn. And people will be mad at you because you waited your turn. And I'm not just talking about biological. My grandfather was not my biological grandfather. He married my grandmother when my father was 12. But it's the only granddad we know. Y'all don't hear me. His name was Brown. My name is Gilliard. Y'all still ain't hearing me yet. But in the spirit world, he carried me. Because God knew I was on the way. I hear God say, I knew each of you were on the way. And there is spiritual ancestors that carried you. In the 30s, somebody was praying for you and didn't even know your name. But that's how spiritual legacy works. That God drops you in the heart of someone. And they war for something that they don't even know what they're warring for. But because they're intercessor, the call of prayer will fall on them to pray for stuff they don't even know they're praying for. And guess who that was? You. Y'all don't hear me. I'm the replacement. And here it is. All these years later, y'all still ain't seeing me. I end up being called back to lead the church he started in 1934 after my dad served for 19 years after my cousin served y'all still ain't hearing me for 35 years I'm now in my second year because I was a replacement nothing was wrong with them but they came to an end they came to an end, but the call did not come to an end. United Churches of Deliverance. Y'all don't hear me. Where 
forever. This fellowship, this organization, wherever it is now and wherever it is will go. As you celebrate and honor, as I look through things and hear your verbiage of celebrating the person, the bishop that stood before you before this day. I'm watching live and seeing how people are saying he would be proud. I, I'm, when I walk in the building, I engage in the moment. I don't sit there and be deep and wait for my time to show off. I engage in the moment. I say, God, why am I here? Why did you send me? I don't even know this bishop. Why did my name get dropped on this flyer? It wasn't so I can have another place to go. I'm sure somebody had to be told no because I was going to be here. Y'all don't hear me. I'm not here because I didn't have nothing else to do. I'm here because this is my connection and my covenant with God. Wherever you want me, send me. I don't mean no harm. Every chair in this building could have been empty. And it could have been me and Bishop and his wife. And I would have preached, said, and did the same thing. Because I did not come to see a crowd. I came to connect with a purpose. And I ain't cheating nobody. Just because I don't see a thousand people, I ain't gonna give no half-hearted word and no leftovers. Lord, what do you want these people to know? And as I sat there, he said, tell them they are replacements. Tell them get themselves together and come out of depression and come out of wandering and scratching your head and trying to figure out your purpose. Get yourself together. You're a replacement. something has stopped and now you must start because the call of this organization does not go in the ground of the last leader but God raises up people my dear mother died and I'm gone, I'm done, I'm praying my dear mother died unexpected many many years ago she was at somebody's house and died sitting in the chair Facebook, I know they get tired of me talking about it, but I was a mama's boy. I love my mama. Just judge yourself. I'm a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. And my first love, my mama. Y'all don't hear me. And I thought I couldn't do nothing. My mama died on a Saturday. Hear me, Bishop. I'm cutting the ribbon buying a brand new church in New Jersey that Sunday I'm to cut the ribbon I begged my mom pastor to come to the ribbon cutting service and she kept saying baby the Lord just keep telling me to stay around the house I can't come I'll be there another time and the Lord knew if my mama had came to Jersey and died in my house I would have lost my prayer mind so he knew he was going to call her home that Saturday so he forced her to stay there y'all don't hear me and I was about to cancel the cutting ribbon service. And I could hear my mama say, if you want to honor me, live and do what I taught you to do. It is a dishonor to any leader for their work to die because they die. It's a dishonor. It's a dishonor. Pastor Brown Memorial, it would be a dishonor to my cousins 35 years of labor for us to vacillate and fall apart and walk away and quit because he's not there anymore. It's a dishonor to his labor. And it would be a dishonor to this bishop that God called home for this organization to break apart and to allow division to come in and isms and schisms. So what do we do? We raise up and we surround the replacement. Yeah, yes, Remember to say something you don't like. We hold the replacement's hand up and then we give the replacement time to grow into their mantle. Because Saturday morning, a different mantle will hit his life. 
And you got to give him time. Just cause the robe get on him don't mean the mantle gets on him. Take him a little time to grow in the oil of being a presiding bishop. But if you're around when he's raptured, that means you go up to. Oh, I'm in the wrong organization. I heard my brother talk about it. That's why the that's why the man was able to catch the mantle. Because he followed close. All of y'all that's trying to back up, talking about I don't know, you gonna miss something. Cause when he's raptured, y'all ain't ready for my talk. I got to do what the Lord say. Saturday morning, he will be raptured. That word just means caught up. He's gonna be taken up to another rim. And when he's taken up, everybody that's following him close, mantles are gonna drop in this room. Woo! And if you thought you were doing something, Something great are getting ready to hit your life. I'm so sorry, Bishop. I don't mean to be out of order. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Mm. <clears throat> Find somebody to connect with all over this room. Come on. Find somebody. You're not comfortable touching their hand and put your hand on their back. Do something. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. I'm sorry, camera. I'm walking and moving so much. Forgive me. Touch them. Touch them. As you touch them, say neighbor. Matter of fact, call them who they are. Say replacement. For the next 60 seconds. I make a vow to pray for you for you to walk in your assignment and for you to fulfill everything God has on your life all I ask you to do is to return the favor and pray for me because in this room right now are replacements that are on the way when I count to three I want you to begin to pray I want you to speak in the spirit some of you have prayer language and the Holy Ghost will shift your tongue you'll begin to pray and you'll begin to walk some of you are going to carry legacy some of you are going to bear spiritual legacy tonight I hear a travailing in the spirit (laughs) 